Hello everyone, this is Fabien Costa and today we're going to talk about Photographer 3, the new version of the Blender add-on that adds camera exposure, autofocus, white balance and now physical light units to your lights in Blender. This is a big update. I've changed a lot of things, I've rewritten a lot of things to make it more modular, to make it cleaner in the code. So hopefully maybe someday we can ask the Blender Foundation to integrate Photographer inside uh, Blender directly. And um, I will just talk about the differences and the new features in that video. If you want to see more about how it functions, I would recommend to watch the previous videos from my channel. Um, and I will start with the, the camera settings and then for the physical light, it's going to be in the second part of the video. So I will put a link in the description to go directly there. So the biggest difference in uh, version 3 is that you now have an add-on panel. Before there was just a small part that was in the view panel, but now there is this own photographer panel. And you have the camera list as before, where you can uh, create your cameras from there. And now I have a couple of new buttons. I have the lock camera to view and border, which I use very often. Um, I also added the lock camera to view here at the bottom because I want to access it often. So I, th I like to have it in there so for instance if I create a new camera from here I'll just uh, change the resolution and I will lock it yeah. so that way I can select my other camera if I want or if I want to change the scene active camera now you have a button on the side to switch between them and all the settings that you have here are the settings for the, the active camera. So as before, you have the panel in the camera properties, and these are the ones of your selected camera, but these ones won't change as you change your camera. It's only when you change the scene active camera here. So the good thing is that those settings are always the one that you're going to see. Every setting you're going to change here is going to be directly visible, while before you could change the settings of your, of your camera that is not the active one, so it would tell you, shows you that it's not the active, and you would change those settings and you would say, okay, it's doing nothing, what's going on? Well, here you can do it and it will change it directly. So I hope it's a bit more user-friendly for that. Um, now I've added a new camera and lens uh, settings, the most common one that I use. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of settings that are available in the cameras and I find it's been, there's a bit of clutter as well, and uh, you have a lot of presets that are very specific with camera names and stuff. I, I find it a bit hard to use. So what I've added is uh, the most common sensor types that you can find. You can also create your custom one by just setting the sensor width. You can control if you want to have the depth of field and your aperture is here now, and then the characteristic of your bokeh. And I've also added presets. so. For instance, if I want to shoot with a Fuji X-T4 with a 56mm, um, it will just set up the sensor type, the focal length, the maximum aperture, so you can always go lower than that, you can always change it, but this would be the, the fastest aperture of the lens. And then uh, the number of blades, and if it's anamorphic or not. So for instance, if I take the Cook 50 anamorphic with an Alexa, then I have a Super 35 sensor with an anamorphic ratio of 2 and 11 blades. It won't do like the visual signature, it won't do the vignetting or the chromatic aberration because these kind of things should be done in compositing. Uh, there is no way to do it in the camera directly in, in Blender. Then we have the exposure. So this hasn't changed much. Uh, the only thing that I've changed is that uh, now the aperture is up there. So I removed it from here uh, for the EV value because you don't need it. If you're using the manual, then of course it's still there. Uh, so you're gonna see that it's doubled, but it's in case you don't want to use depth of field, but you still want the aperture to change your exposure, uh, you can do that by just turning off the depth of field here and yeah, that will always be connected. Now you have the autofocus buttons that are here in the panel. They are still there at the bottom, but since they are redundant, then I've added them in the preferences. You have now a button, show autofocus buttons in the 3D view header. You can decide to hide them or not. You will have to save your preferences and restart Blender for it to take effect. What you have as well is the white balance. So I've changed something because before, um, I'm gonna show you if I go to cycles, 
very quickly. I'm just gonna have to zoom out because, yeah, I put the border. The render is pretty long on this one, so it's gonna slow my machine. Before, there was a problem where when you would want to pick your stuff, as soon as you move the mouse, then it would just re-trigger the render. So you would have to leave your mouse in the position, wait for a few seconds for it to refine, and then you could pick it. So now this is fixed. You can move the mouse anywhere. It won't refresh the render. It will only refresh the render when you click and apply the, the temperature. Unfortunately, I don't think I, I can remove that. This is the way Blender models work. So, uh, And then we have the resolution. Nothing has changed here. You can just use resolution per camera. Uh, if we go to the preferences, um, there are a few options. So now in the exposure settings, I'm exposing the lens attenuation factor. So I will put a link in the description. There is something new happening with Unreal 4.25, where they decided to not follow the ISO standards, where they take in account the lens attenuation, like the fact that the light that goes into the lens and hits the sensor has lost energy uh, in uh, reflections on the lens or uh, in vignetting those kind of things so usually you use a lens attenuation factor of 0 0.65 if you follow those um, standards and if you don't which makes the math way more uh, like uh, predictable for the artist then um, you use a value of 0 0.78 so that's the default one that's going to match unreal if you leave it there but if you want to use more photographic or other render engines might use that, you can use 0.65. Uh, there is another option as well. Uh, what I notice is that when I'm using Blender ACES, uh, it looks darker than Unreal ACES, and I don't know why, um, because if I compare the linear images, they are the same, the exposure are working the same between the two. It's just that when you apply the uh, ACES color management, then it's just darker. So if you check that, it will just fix it for you and you are able to render exactly the same intensity if you use the same camera settings and the same light settings uh, between Unreal and Blender. And I think that's all for the camera, so let's move to another scene and talk about the physical lights. Here is a light, so I'm using EV because it's really nice to be able to update in real time, and that's a good thing, is that now with the photograph add-on you have a physical light panel which has a few more settings that are compatible for EV cycles. They are not added to LuxCore, and the reason for that is that I actually already did it in LuxCore uh, 2.3. I added it directly in Blender LuxCore. You're free to use it as well. What you're gonna notice is that you have little K here, and that option allows you to switch between temperature in Kelvin or color RGB, so you are used to the RGB picker, but then if you press K, then you can change the color temperature for your black body. So that's very handy. And then if you want to switch back to color, it will keep that value. It won't work the other way because if you're using something green, that's not outside of the spectrum for black bodies. So if you press K, it will just override it. But yeah, at least it works this way. Um, then what you see is you have a new light unit and that light unit is uh, power is the default one that you have in Blender. But now I also added a power advanced and uh, it does two things. Uh, one other thing is that it exposes the efficacy of the lamp, which is lumen per watts. There are a few things to know about it. I will make a video. I already started, but I haven't finished it, but a video about physical light units. It's more like theory based and I will explain all the things behind. Then the second thing about power advance is that, for instance, if I change back to power, the default behavior in Blender, you will see that if I change from point to spot, they keep the exact same brightness when I'm switching them. The only difference is that there is a mask that just makes it 180 degrees, but the brightness doesn't change. And it's very nice because it's user friendly, but it's incorrect. Um, what you want is that when you emit something, if you refocus the beam of the emission, then it should feel brighter because you have more uh, radiation into one direction. So that's what the power advance fixes. So now, uh, if I change between point and spotlight, you can see that it's brighter because now it's taking the energy and focusing in 180 degrees instead of 360 degrees. And then if I change the size of the spot, uh, then you will see that it will become brighter and brighter. So that's the way it should work. Then we can move on to lumen. So lumen is the same. If you change the 
size of your spotlight, it will just refocus the beam and feel brighter. And the difference with the power advance is that lumen is a photometric unit. So the human eye perceives the brightness of a light differently depending on its wavelength, which means depending on its color. So when you're doing radiometric units like power, you don't care about that. And I will show you, for instance, if you use a blue light in power, and then I will move it to green, I'm just changing the U, but not the value, then it feels brighter. Like you can see, it goes darker, and this one is brighter. Same for red, if I go to red, it feels darker. And that's the way the human eye perceives the light. So um, photometric units like Lumen or Candela, they are fixing that for you. And this is the normalized per color luminance option here. I keep it optional because uh, some engines don't do it, which is incorrect. Uh, but they should. I think they don't do it because it's a bit inaccurate. Since we are not a spectral renderer, you, we don't use wavelength. We actually use RGB colors. So it's a bit inaccurate, but it still helps into turning a lamp into photometric unit. So now the difference when I'm changing from green to blue is way smaller. It's just compensating for that. Same for red and green. And uh, yeah, I can show you actually, if I go to blue, the difference between normalizing or not normalizing. Also, when you normalize your color, um, the value doesn't change anything. So if I change the value, um, you will see that it still stays the same. I'm losing a bit of saturation for some reason, but yeah, uh, this is to make sense because sometimes you put a value here and you say, oh, my light is, uh, I don't know, 5,000 lumen. But if your color is almost black, then your lamp is not 5,000 lumens. So that fixes that for you. Then we have the candela. Uh, so candela is um, a unit that is taking in account the uh, angle of emission, which means that if you change your cone, then now it's going to stay the same brightness as in the default in Blender. So it's really handy to use that. And then if you use a real light, you will see that you have another option, which is the per square meter uh, for the candela. So let me just set back to something white. Um, if you look at my reflection of my source here, you will see that if I change the size of it, then that reflection becomes darker. And that's because the energy of emission is spread thin on the entire surface as I'm making it larger or smaller. Um, so this also loses a bit of brightness in the light, but usually it makes you feel like the brightness of light stays the same. So now there's an option, which is the per square meter, that will make sure that this intensity of your surface looks the same and stays the same, because now it's uh, per surface area. So now if I change that, you will see that the reflection stays the same intensity but then if i make the light smaller then it will look darker if i make the light larger it will look brighter so it works for all the shapes and uh, i've done the math and everything so also something that you need to know about it is that if you change it in the viewport that will break it uh, it's not gonna update automatically the same if you size it like this so the add-on will let you know that the lighter size has changed and it needs to be recalculated. So if you just press that, then you're back into candela per square meter. So if you change it here, it's fine. If you do it in a viewport, remember that you have to press that button that will appear. And then if we have a look at the sun, you will see that it has its own light units. The default one is going to be a radiance, which is the default one that you have in Blender as well. It's just not named like this. But this is watts per square meter. So this is a radiometric unit. And also I added Lux, uh, which is a value for illuminance. And uh, it's very easy to find information about Lux because it's easy to measure. So for instance, a sunny day with a clear sky, you would need an intensity of 100,000, which is going to make your scene very bright. And that's why you need to use the photograph add-on to adjust your exposure uh, to make it back into the, the visible range. And uh, yeah, it has the normalized by color luminance because it's a photometric unit, of course. And that's it for this. Another thing that is cool with the physical light is that uh, you can save your own presets. So Photographer is going to come with a few presets. 
and they are all depending on uh, the type of the lights that you're using and you can easily save your own presets and share them with the community if you want so for instance if i want this omni light to be a candle then i can just press that and you'll see that it's almost invisible because it's very dark light so i'm gonna go into my camera exposure and i will just compensate for it and this brings another feature that i wanted to talk about uh, when you're using very dim lights and a very low light scene there is an optimization in cycles it also exists in ev but it's not uh, as problematic but if you use in cycles you're going to see that when you're using very low exposure value this is there's a lot of grain and this comes from the light sampling threshold so cycles to optimize the rendering it just ignores lights that have very little contribution to the scene so if the intensity of the light is very small it won't be sampling properly so what i've done is here in the render properties in the sample this is the value that you need to change and i've added this button that will calculate the most appropriate value for this exposure so if i click here then it fixes my noise issue for instance and if you go to the preferences of the add-on you have this uh, light sampling threshold and this is the value that you can find here as well so by default in cycles this is 0 0.01 so if you want to keep that optimization as effective um, this is the value that it's going to use and then you will multiply it with your exposure and i think this is all for this video i hope that you like this new update and uh, if you have any bugs or any question you can hit me up on uh, the blender artist forums and i really appreciate all the donations from the people i mean if you feel that the add-on is helping you and in, in your work and uh, in making pretty images it's always nice to consider donating i really appreciate it and if you want to have something for your money i can always remind you that i have the light packs where you can buy very high quality uh, lamp assets they have like very nice hdr textures that work very well for reflections it's optimized it's working for cycles and ev so that's also one way to support me and right now there is a sale of 25 percent, so you can get it for nine dollars and there's a new light pack coming soon. The first light that you saw in the first scene is going to be part of it. This is going to be more architectural interior lamps. That's it for today. Uh, see you soon.